Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Betty Pra and in this video, I'll be going over the best settings to use in Apex Legends Season 17. Trust me, when I first started playing Apex, I didn't care much about optimizing my settings. But once I did, I became like 3 times better instantly. So if you guys are excited for this, then drop a like and subscribe to my channel. And without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, first coming to the gameplay settings. We have Interact Prom Style, which is set to default. This will basically make sure you are displaying more or less information about the items which are present on the ground. Compact means less information, default means more information. I have personally set it to default. If you guys are beginners at the game then I would recommend using default as well as you will know what items will do what, what items to use, all the information about the attachments and stuff. So therefore this will really help you out. But again if you are going on a more professional route and you are already a player who has already played the game a lot and you know what all of the stuff does in the game then I would recommend setting it to compact. Button hints is turned off. Again this will basically help you. Uh, help and tell you what weapons are used for what, what class each weapon belong to, all their attachments and stuff. So I've set it to off. If you guys are beginners, again you can set it to on. Then cross air damage feedback is set to off. This will basically indicate whether an enemy is actually firing at you or not. But this will again take up most of the space. So why I like to have these as compact or off is because so whenever you are playing the game and uh, whenever you are playing their game you need to make sure that you are able to see most of the screen in game and so this will basically improve your performance the reason is because if you are able to see more you are able to detect enemies clearly you are able to make more decisions clearer faster and quicker so rather than all these extra unnecessary stuff uh, being in your way so this will actually help you see a lot clearer so therefore i have set this to off then damage number this is actually an important setting. I have set it to stacking. You can also set it to floating or both. So setting it to stacking will help you out because stacking means basically the numbers get stacked or it gets added up. This will give you a more precise damage number, what damage exactly you have done to the enemy rather than floating which will basically the numbers you, it will be going the numbers will be going and you basically have to add those numbers up to know how much damage you have actually dealt to the enemy. So therefore stacking is way better because then you don't really have to do the addition whenever you are shooting an enemy. You can also have both but I don't recommend both because again floating will take up more of your uh, more of your space so therefore you are unable to see the screen properly. So therefore keep it at stacking. Then ping opacity is turned to faded. So faded because I don't really care about the pings that much. So again if you uh, if you want it to look more brighter you can set to default. Arbituaries is turned on. Minimap, minimap rotation is turned off. I personally love to have minimap rotation off. I know some people like to play it as on. So having it as off gives you a more precise location in my opinion wherever you are. Whether you have to turn left or right or where, where you have to go. But if you are a person who likes it turned on then you can use it as on. Weapon auto cycle on empty is turned off. Again if you are a beginner I would recommend actually turning this thing on. Because when, so this will basically whenever a clip of your weapon goes down or it, a clip gets emptied so this will automatically switch to the next weapon. So basically when this is off you don't really automatically switch to the next weapon you have to do this manually. So therefore if you are unable to keep track of your magazine uh, how much ammo you still have left then I would recommend using it as on but if you want to have the most con the more control over your gameplay then having it as off is better again having more control over your game will make you a better player but again if you are a beginner you have it as on else have it as off auto sprint again same case if you are a beginner have it as on else you will be having it as off so this will, this will basically makes you not press your left shift or your run button whenever you want to run. So as soon as you start walking for a while it will automatically start running. I personally m have mine turned on because I have turned this on from the start of the game. So again if you want more control over your gameplay having this as off is actually much better. I, uh, I, don't, I haven't really practiced it as having off therefore I, mine is turned on. Double tap sprint is actually not that required so I have turned it off. Jetpack control. This is this is uh, so this is the one where, where you will be using your wall carry for. Again, you can set it to toggle as well, but this is not really required unless you are playing wall carry. Then you have incoming damage feedback. It is set to 2D. You can have 3D or both as well. So 2D will basically give you the same damage numbers, but again, it will be less. Uh, so it will be more stacked numbers rather than floating. In. 
Okay, taking damage closes death box or crafting menu is again a very important setting. So this setting is actually turned off. So basically what this does is whenever you are looting a death box and whenever you are damaged, you automatically close and come out of the death box. The only disadvantage with this is that whenever you are trying to do an armor swap in the middle of a fight, you are unable to do this as whenever they are hitting you, you are unable to open the death box. Therefore having this as off is very important. And hop up pop up is turned off streamer mode is turned off if you guys are a streamer you can turn it on it will basically provide some anonymity anonymous mode is enabled again if you are a streamer you can enable this mode usage sharing is disabled performance display is on this will basically display your performance your fps and stuff then club invites is enabled you can also disable it not a big deal Communication filter is for everybody which means that if you send or talk to someone it is going to be heard by everybody or it's going to be seen by everybody in your team. Reticle, you can customize the reticle or you can have the default reticle. Customize the reticle as you can see here, you can change the color of the reticle not the shape of the reticle though unfortunately. Then as you can see here you can change it between multiple colors. So the best colors which I think you should be using is going to be your cyan or green or yellow. So cyan or green or yellow why I think these are the best colors as these colors are complementary or they can be easily seen at different terrain. So as you can see so you always try to choose a color which can be easily detectable at different different backgrounds as you can see my cyan color is detectable everywhere. So that is the color you should choose. Previously I was rocking the red color which is also pretty good but again at some points it's not detectable so therefore I changed mine to cyan. So you guys can check this out as well. Then we have laser sight. So laser sight you can actually customize the laser sight as well. So laser sight is not that much important as that of the reticle. So I would advise just going with the same color as that of the reticle or you can just go or go on white or red. So whatever it may be, so laser sight is not that important, but make it as same as the reticle. Then coming to your colorblind mode, colorblind mode for me is actually turned off. You can also turn on colorblind mode. So, uh, so I would recommend using Tritanopia if you are using colorblind mode and this will basically brighten up the screen. The only reason why I'm not using Tritanopia is your ping. So whenever you ping someone, it will become yellow. I'm actually bad at detecting yellow. Therefore, for me, it off is better. So if you guys are fine with that, then you can use Tritanopia to easily detect enemies. Then subtitles, again, not much of a big deal. It's turned off. Subtitle size is normal. Enable accessible chat features is turned off. Convert incoming voice to chat text. We don't need that. Turn off. Play incoming text as a speech. Again, not required, turned off. Now coming to mouse and keyboard settings. So I do have a dedicated video for mouse and keyboard settings, how to find the perfect sensitivity. So here, if you guys have not seen that video, go and check that out. But I'll just go through over the important points real quick. So your mouse sensitivity does not really depend upon the in-game sensitivity. It is actually a combination of your in-game sensitivity as well as your mouse's DPI. So you need to calculate something known as EDPI, which stands for effective dots per inch which is equal to your mouse DPI times your in-game sensitivity. So my EDPI is going to be 1600 as I'm going to multiply 2.0 which is my in-game sense into 800 which is my mouse's DPI. ADS mouse sensitivity is what you'll be using whenever you are aiming downside. So here you need to turn on the per optic ADS sensitivity which basically means that for different different optics you can choose different sensitivities. I personally was not using this but trust me using different sensitivity for different optics really improves your gameplay. So here for 1x scope or iron sights so I have 1.0 this means that it is same as that of my current mouse sensitivity it means whenever I'm aiming down sight with a 1x scope it is same as that of my current sensitivity so but coming to my 2x scope 3x scope and 4x optics so here I've bumped it up a bit for 1.3 so why I have done this is because as you increase the sensitivity the farther you are you, it is harder to control the recoil patterns so therefore in order to easily control Control the recoil patterns you might need some sensitivity boost so therefore I have considered this as 1.3 
then coming to your 6x scope 8x scope and 10x scope these are bumped up to 1.4 so again this uh, these are for your snipers more or less so again the farther you are it is harder to control these scopes so therefore i have again bumped up the sensitivity a little more compared to the previous ones so these sensitivities are actually perfect for me so this might be used as a starting sensitivity for you guys so again play around with it mess around with it and then find your perfect sensitivity also do make sure to check out my video on how to perfectly find your sensitivity right there now coming to your mouse acceleration that is turned off you always need this as off mouse inversion if if you would like to play inverted you can turn it on else it is off for everybody else lighting effects is not that required it is on or off then coming to your key binds again i do have a video for all the most optimal key binds in apex legends so do make sure to check that video out put in the link in the description after this video now i'll just go over the uh, i'll just quickly go over what are the important key binds and what you must do as well so move forward move back move left and move right wasd as usual but again if you can see the move forward is also bound to my scroll wheel up so this basically helps you perform all the movement tricks better for example wall jumping tap strafing especially is done very easily if you are using move forward with scroll wheel up and then if you are using move forward as scroll wheel up your jump will be bound to scroll wheel down again jumping using scroll wheel rather than your space bar is much easier so that you can easily perform more uh, difficult movements in apex legends so basically you always need these two to be complementary to one another so if your mouse scroll wheel up will be your move forward then your jump is your scroll wheel down else it is vice versa anything is fine but make sure they are bound to your scroll wheel then coming to your sprint or toggle zoom here my sprint or toggle zoom is kept at left shift now coming to your crouch toggle or crouch hold i personally love having crouch hold and i also recommend you guys to do so as well so toggling basically takes more time than holding i'm just going to explain it real quick so basically whenever you are holding crouch so whenever you press the button you will crouch and as soon as you release the button you will stand back up again so whereas whenever uh, whereas in toggling so whenever you press the button you will crouch and again in order to stand back up or recover to your original position you need to press the crouch button again so therefore holding is much more effective and much more easier you also have more control of your character so therefore crouching is way better in my opinion so this is set to space if you want you can also set it to left control then coming to your tactical ability another important key bind so what i personally do is place all of the important key binds in easy to reach locations on my hands so therefore i don't really have to keep searching for these key binds or i need to stay away from my original wasd keys in order to press these key binds so tactical ability is placed at f because again it is used often coming to ultimate ability which is not so used often but still a very important ability so it is placed at left control then coming to your interact or pick up it is at e again one of the most important key binds then you have alternate interact not very much used so it is placed at z inventory is placed at i which is also used as mouse button so i'm going to open my inventory using mouse button this is also actually an important key bind then your map you need to be constantly aware of the map during the game so therefore it is again at an easier access spot where you can press it with your ring finger which is your tab then which you then you have attack attack is left click aim the toggle fire mode so this is again not very much important it basically means you can toggle the fire mode between burst or single fire mode mostly used in very few guns in apex legends but still it is kind of used so it is present at n so you can hit this with your thumb then coming to your aim down side toggle or hold again the same explanation can be applied here as that of the crouch so basically holding is way better than toggling so again right click will be used for holding then coming to your melee melee is pressed uh, melee is set at t you can either press t using your keyboard i personally use a macro so therefore my t is actually bound to my mouse button so whenever i hit my mouse button you will be actually meleeing if you guys don't know how to install macros or how to assign macros you you can just search it up on google or youtube you might find those videos or i might do some video in the future as well if i do i will definitely link it in the description below then coming to your reload again it is set to r it is by default coming to cycle weapon so if you are at the first weapon it will cycle to your second if you are not holding any weapons it will bring out a weapon so again a very important key bind it is set to q if you want to take weapon 1 it's 1 weapon 2 is 2 holstering your weapons very important so whenever you are running in order to get a movement speed boost you always need to keep your weapons holstered 
So therefore, this is an important bind. It is present at three. Equipping grenades. My latest video was about grenades. So if you guys haven't checked that out, make sure to go and check that out after this video. So grenades should be used effectively in game. So this will really help you win a lot more battles. Again, a very important stuff to do. So again, it is uh, again I'm going to be using G, which is actually by default. Coming to your equip survival item. Survival item here refers to your heat shield or your mobile respawn beacon again not much used especially the respawn beacon i haven't used this much so but heat shield you will be using there and there so therefore you're going to keep it as an easy to hit location as well which is your left alt coming to your sele use selected health item is pressed at x but as you can see here i have different binds for each of the different healing items in apex legends why i do this is because in order to eliminate the error whenever you are trying to heal using a specific health item but you are healing using a specific so but you are healing using a different item so that really does suck so i have been there at some uh, some panic situations where i try to pop a shield battery rather i would pop a shield cell so therefore having different keybinds for each of these will really help you out during those tough situations but if you don't it is also fine but having it does make your game feel better if you guys haven't yet just go and try it out so here I have syringe at 5, medkit as 5, so these two will give you health, whereas all these uh, C, V, B, H, uh, so these are all the keys which are present at the lower end of my keyboard, these will give you shields, so C will give my shield cell, battery set to V, phoenix set is set to B, character utility action not that required, so it is set to H, inspect weapon not that much required, again it is set to M. Now communication includes your open emote wheel, so this is set to this key which lies next to your one in your keyboard then you have ping which is your middle mouse button again you have different types of ping but you won't be using these things anyway if you want to use these things you can just hold down the middle mouse button and you can select them so not that much required so therefore i haven't having so therefore i haven't bound my own keybinds for each of them then push to talk very important keybind i recommend bonding it on one of your mouse buttons mine is bound to mouse button 5 then you have message team so whenever you are t so whenever you are playing with a team and you have to message them or you don't have voice chat enabled you can just press enter and then type the message and you can send it using enter so as for the other keybinds you have all your numpads and all spectate closer enemy these are completely unnecessary so i'm just going to skip over them you don't really need to bind any of these keybinds now as for the controller settings i personally play on mouse and keyboard so unfortunately i really don't play on controllers so i'm not sure what settings you should use so but be sure to check out other people's videos and also if you are on a controller make sure you are using the most optimized settings on the controller so that you are playing in the most efficient manner possible now coming to your video settings. So video settings or display mode should always be full screen. It should not be win windowed or borderless windowed. So why it should be full screen is because whenever you are playing at full screen, so you can attain the maximum FPS whenever you are playing at full screen. This is because all of your frames will be focused on that current window which is currently open and not on the other windows which are opened at the background. So therefore this will perform and this will increase your performance very well. Now coming to your aspect ratios, you can either play at 4 by 3 and 5 by 4, which I don't personally recommend playing. Then you have 16 by 9 aspect ratio and 16 by 10 aspect ratio. 16 by 9 is going to be a normal native aspect ratio. Here you can choose between different resolutions. So 1920 by 1080 is going to be your 1080p resolution. So if you're having a great monitor, then be sure to use this resolution. It is the best resolution. You can easily detect enemies and it will and your game looks much clearer and it will it is probably one of the best resolutions used by most people. If you are using uh, if you are having a slightly bad or a worse computer, then you can go and change this and make this lower for 1366 by 768. I don't really recommend any of these middle resolutions, but I do recommend 1280 by 720. As I do use this resolution, this is basically the same as that of 1920 by 1080 resolution, but less clearer, but it will give you a huge performance boost. So if you are having a low end PC, then trust me, using 1280 by 720, just by sacrificing a few pixels, just by sacrificing a few of your clarity of your game you will get an insane performance boost and you are able to play way better whereas if you are using 16 by 10 aspect ratio this is more of a stretch resolution here you can use 1680 by 1050 1600 by 1024 1440 by 900 i would not recommend using these lower two resolutions as your game does look quite messy 
but you can use those two as well if you want apart from that these first three resolutions are all really good i've tested them all out they all seem to be fine but in my opinion the best resolution is a stretch resolution again if you guys don't know i do have a video on how to get that stretch resolution so go make sure to check that out after this video to get the best possible resolution for your game now coming to your brightness your brightness i have turned it up a notch so i recommend you guys to do so as well so you need to be having brightness up because as as always you need to be able to see more things clearer and need to spot enemies easier in the game so i think the default is at 50 i have popped i have uh, popped it up to 70% now coming to your fov so fov is set to maximum this basically makes you see a lot more which is happening in game so i personally recommend having it as maximum as well fov ability scaling is disabled sprint view shake is minimal v-sync is disabled this will give you the best performance boost trust me on this then nvidia reflex is set to enable plus boost if you are having a mid to high range pc i would recommend nvidia reflex to be enabled plus boost as this will give you the best performance boost if you are having a very low end pc then i would recommend turning it off but again if you are not sure about which one suits you better you can try out both of them and see which will give you the most fps and whichever one gives you the most fps you'll be using that one Adaptive resolution FPS target is set to zero. Adaptive super cycling is not used. Anti-aliasing is turned off. If you want smoother edges, you can turn it on. I personally have it at off. Texture streaming budget is at very low. You can also put it to none, but what happens when you put it to none is basically it makes your game very poor and you, you, you basically can't detect mo most of the enemies. So I would say use the least amount here which is your very low you can also use low or medium depending upon how good your gpu is mine is actually quite a low end pc so therefore i'm going to be using this at very low but if you are having a good pc i would recommend using low or medium there is actually no reason to use high or very high or even insane this will basically increase the load on your cpu and will that's affect all the for this video do use these settings and try it out make a few tweaks if needed so and have, have fun like blasting the new season setup, I would also comment below if you are enjoying the new season or not and don't no forget to subscribe to, to my channel as i will be uploading more great tips and tricks videos for you guys to dominate the new season so then coming to your gaming, texture and filtering, I'll see you guys filtering in the next video. Bilinear, this is the best one. You can also try others if you want, but again, bilinear is the best. It will give you the best performance. Ambient occlusion quality is disabled. Sun shadow coverage is low. Sun shadow detail is low. Spot shadow detail is low. You can also disable it if you want. So then you have volumetric lightning is disabled. Dynamic spot shadows is disabled. Model detail is low. FX detail is low. Impact marks is disabled and ragdolls is disabled. So basically why I have disabled all of these stuff is because I personally play the game to win, not to have, not to just look at the scenery. But if you guys are a beginner, you just want to play for fun and you don't really care about any of these things. You just want to look at your skin more. You just want to explore the world and just enjoy the views and stuff. Make sure to pop it up a notch. Do enjoy the game. So always you need to play in order to enjoy the game. So whatever makes you feel good, it is best. So, but if you are playing in a more competitive level or if you are trying to improve your performance, if you are trying to play good, if you are trying to win more, then make sure to keep in low all of these settings as this will greatly improve your fps boost the more the fps the smoother the gameplay and the more the victories you'll be having trust me on this now coming to your audio settings so your master volume is your overall in-game volume i personally recommend having this as high as possible so that you, you need to keep this at a volume where it is very high but it is not really hurting your ears it must be comfortable for you but it should be high enough to hear the enemy's footsteps hear the gunshots where they are shooting from and everything so you need to keep it as high as possible now coming to your output device choose whichever output device you want i am personally using a headphone so you make sure that you use headphones as well it will help you hear the audio way better rather than using your speakers and coming to your voice chat settings so in voice chat input device is again set to default voice chat record mode is set to push to talk this is a very important option and i highly recommend using push to talk here you can also use open mic but where so but whenever you are talking with some let's say your family or family members or something other people will be hearing you so therefore it is very important to have push to talk turned on so you'll be using this on a mouse button as indicated earlier in the video so whenever you want to talk you'll just push the button while holding the button you'll be talking 
Now coming to your open mic threshold, it is set to 1290. So here the lower the mic threshold, you need to speak more louder and the higher the threshold, you need to speak more softer. So you can experiment with this. This basically depends on different mics you have, different headsets you have. So depending upon that, you need to adjust this one. Incoming voice chat volume, I would recommend having this volume at around 30 to 50%. So mine, uh, mine is set at 40% as an average. This sound must always be lower than that your, your in-game sound because whenever you, whenever someone is talking to you and you can't hear your footsteps, that means that it is bad. So you need to always have your incoming voice chat volume lower than that of your master volume. So even when you are having fun playing with your friends, so as soon as some enemy tries to approach you or tries to shoot you or sneak up on you, you will be easily able to hear them. Now coming to your sound effects volume, again same as that of master volume, try to keep it as high as possible. Try to keep it as high as possible without hurting your ears. So because so you need, so again you need to hear the footsteps more clearer and also when, where the enemies are, the exact locations of them. Dialogue volume is not that required in game but you can keep it at 70%. Music volume is set to 0. This is basically the mu music which plays whenever you are dropping down. Uh, or whenever you are dropping down or whenever you are in the lobby so again lobby music here whenever you are in the lobby this is the music which plays you can have it at 50% uh, or 60% whatever you feel like I personally have it have mine turned off because I personally listen to different songs when I'm in the lobby or something so therefore my personally it is off it is your choice it does not affect your in-game performance coming to sound in the background make sure this is off as this will cut off any sounds which is playing in the background